today we are going to be looking at section 5 of the POBC syllabus. This section is entitled production. Simple as that, production. So we're going to try and go through all the basics of production as it relates to CXC, CSEC, principles of business. All right, so let's just jump right into it and starting off with the factors of production, of course. And so there are four factors of production, land, we have land, we have labor, we have capital, and we have enterprise or entrepreneurial skill. Another name for that is management. So you have land, labor, capital, entrepreneurial skill, or management. So those are the four factors of production. So let's look at them individually and see if you can break down exactly what they are. So let's start. Factors of production. Again, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial skill or entrepreneurship or management. So what is land as a factor of production? Now, land as a factor of production includes all natural resources, all natural resources, all God-given resources. That is land as a factor of production. So if you see a mine, a mine to mine gold, to mine silver, copper, whatever, that's land as a factor of production. The, 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 the area in which your premises is located, that's the land as a factor of production. So anything occurring naturally that is used in the process of, of in the process of production that comes from the land is considered part of that factor of production. So the premises, the location, that's land. The, the river, that's land as a factor of production. If you are a fisherman, the water, that's a factor of production land. If you are a farmer, your land space, your, your farm plot, that's a factor of production land. Now, the reward for land is rent. So this is more economics. This is more of an economics term. The reward for land is rent. So land earns rent. But that's more for econ. econ. So again, land as a factor of production, very simple definition, includes all the natural resources that are found on the surface, uh, found on the earth, that are used in production. So that's land right there. The, the, the very soil they use, the river, the mine, whatever, all that encompasses land as a factor of production. So you have land, then you have labor. Okay, what is labor as a factor of production? Here they say labor or the human effort. So labor as a factor of production can be defined as the human effort, whether physical or mental, that is used in production. So that's labor as a factor of production. The human effort or the human energies used in production and it can either be mental or physical. Because, you know, some people are more hands-on and some people use their brains. For example, if, you, if you're a construction worker, you're going to use more hands-on things. So it's more physical. You lift up the cement, you mix the cement, you run the blocks. It's more physical. But if you are some, a lawyer, that's more mental. So sometimes physical and can be just as taxing or mental can be just as taxing as physical. So if you're a doctor, a lawyer, well, doc lawyer, doctors can be physical also if, you, if you're performing surgery. But things like, you know, certain services you would use your mental effort all right so if you're a lawyer for sure law is more mental a mental thing if you're a teacher depends on the subject that you're doing you're going to use your brain your mental effort so labor as a factor of production is the human effort both whether it is physical or mental that is used in production the human effort that's labor, the human resource that is used in production and it can be either physical or mental or both all right, that's labor as a factor of production. Now, labor earns wages or salaries, clearly. You give your labor to a company that give you either a wage weekly or salary. As simple as that. So the reward for labor is wages or salaries. So you have land, labor, capital now. What is capital? Now, capital as a factor of production is all those resources used in the production of something of a good or service okay all those resources used in the production of a good or service it's not only money so it includes money it includes ingredients it includes the jeep that the bus is driving it includes the tractor used in plowing the field it includes the building that houses the bakery all the ovens to bake the stuff so capital is not only money 
as a fact of production, but it's also, you know, the ingredients, the raw materials, the inventory, you know, the buildings, the plumbing, the fittings, all those things come under capital. So capital are all those resources used in the production process. So it's not just money. So I don't think capital is only money. It can be money. It can be the vehicles owned by the company. It can be the buildings owned by the company. Those things, in ingredients, the raw materials, all that comes under capital. You have financial capital, that's the money part. Then you have fixed capital, which includes things like, like the building that is not used up. So fixed capital is not used up totally during production. So if a baker bakes 10 bread, he's not going to use up his oven because that's fixed capital. He's not going to use up his bakery because that's fixed capital. But what he's going to use up would be the ingredients. And those is what, that's what you call working capital. So working capital would be the capital that is used up during the production process. The, the raw materials, the gasoline, the oil, whatever that is used up during the production process. But a fixed one, like the building, the vehicles, the machinery, is not used up during production. And the financial capital would be, of course, the money. All right. So capital have all these things come under capital, financial money, fixed, meaning more permanent assets, buildings, vehicles, those things and working things such as the ingredients and, and the raw materials that are used up during production. All right. The reward for capital is what you call interest. So that's land, labor, capital. Now, enterprise or entrepreneurial skills or management, what is this as a factor of production? Now, this is the factor that brings the other tree together to form a production unit. So the entrepreneurial skill, that's the person, the entrepreneur brings all of these. It's a skill. It's a factor of production. It brings all the other factors of production together to for, to form a productive unit. So that's the person that takes the risk to start the business, to bring all of these together. You go out to find the land, hire the people, invest your money, buy the resources. And your reward, of course, is a profit. So if your business, business is successful, your reward is a profit. So the entrepreneurial skill or the enterprise or the management is the factor of production that brings all the others together. It brings the land, the labor, and the capital together to form the productive unit. So that's what that is in a nutshell. Those are the factors of production. Okay. Now, a lot of us live in the, we live in the Caribbean, and not all the countries are blessed with certain abundance of natural resources. You have Jamaica, we have the bauxite, they have wood, you know, you have Trinidad, of course, have the oil, Guyana have the oil too. Some of us have the, the, the sun, sand, and the sea. That's our production unit for tourism. You know, the Eastern Caribbean and, you know, Windward Islands. So we, the Caribbean, depends heavily on a lot of natural resources for, both, for mining, farming, fishing, you know, for tourism, bauxite, that kind of stuff. So we in the Caribbean have developed certain resources that are natural, like used in producing certain commodities. All right. So we have fertile soil for sure. We have a nice warm climate. We have decent rainfall. Trinidad, Guyana have their oil, natural gas. Guyana have their gold. All right. Jamaica, you have the, the bauxite in Jamaica. Dominica and their rivers, you know, can produce, you know, hydroelectricity. Uh, some other places have like geothermal energies that can be used to harness the power. And of course, a lot of us have this right here, the beaches. A lot, of, a lot of the small islands will lie on natural beaches, sun and sand to earn some income. Okay. All right. So let's continue looking at production. Before we go, let's, let's, let's back check here. Okay. So we have factor of production. We already looked at those. And then we identify some industries developed in the Caribbean from natural resources. All right. So you have the mining again in Guyana, Trinidad got the oil, you have fishing across the region and other areas. So now we are at section specific objective three, differentiate between production and productivity. And this one says output produced versus output per unit 
of input and that right there would be the definition of both so let's get into it production versus productivity production the use of resources to make goods or services production can be organized within firms in a business or within households in both cases inputs are employed to produce outputs firms produce the outputs to sell and earn a profit the households produce the output to meet the needs of the family so right here is key all right right here is key this part here inputs are employed to produce outputs so if you want to define production in a nutshell production simply is the process of taking inputs and turning them into outputs that's production right there inputs turned into outputs tomato turned into tomato paste all right sugar cane turned into sugar or rum so cotton turned into a shirt or pants so inputs turned into output so that's in a nutshell what production is oh, of course you can use a long-winded definition the use of resources to make goods or services production can be organized within firms or within the household in both cases again the key point inputs are employed to produce outputs okay now what is productivity on the other hand now what productive productivity does is that it measures the production it measures the rate of production okay i measure it put a measurement on production so that's productivity so it's like uh one employee can produce let's say 10 bread in a bakery per hour or a farmer can harvest 10 acres per hour or uh let's see what else we can say a person in a bank can conduct 10 transactions per hour so you can also look into services too so not just goods alone alone so productivity measures per unit of input so the measure of output of an organization or economy per input it could be labor raw materials capital so that's productivity it's a per per unit thing per input so if your input is let's say labor how much does that labor produce how much output does this labor produce for the example i gave already if you're in a bakery you have one baker baker can produce 100 loaves of bread per hour that's productivity or if you have if you're running a a, a business a service how much transaction can somebody conduct per hour or per two days or per whatever but it's per per in unit of input so that's what productivity is it measures per unit of input production on the other hand is turning said inputs into output so that's the definition the difference between those two right there production versus productivity very simple very straightforward there are examples here for productivity all right golden acres wider acres busy acres here we go on one hectare that's, that's the size of the farm you have 10 workers they use 1 million in capital and they produce 7,500 tons of cane. Then you have wider acres with 200 hectares, that's the size of, the, of the, the production unit, with 20 workers using $2 million in capital and they produce 15 tons of cane. And then you have busy acres with 100 hectares, just like um, Golden, 10 workers, same way, with one million in capital same way like here and they produce fourteen thousand tons of cane which state has the estate has the highest production which estate has the greatest productivity so highest production clearly is wider acres because they actually produce more so production would be higher right there but for productivity now you would say that bc acres is a little bit more productive because they're using 10 acres to produce 14,000 for 1 million of capital. So they use the same amount of workers and the land size as Golden, same capital, yet Golden only produces uh, almost half, a little over half of what Busy Acres produces. So they call them busy for a reason. Them fellows working, these ones here liming. Okay, they liming. This and this is around the same. All right, this is around the same level of productivity. 
golden and wider acres are on the same level, level of productivity as well as everything is increased by 100% right there. So first here is 100, now to 2, 10 to 20, 1 to 2, and yet you're producing, of course, twice as much. So the most productive unit would be busy acres because they produce more for a, around the same, less or the same amount of workers. So that's production and productivity in a nutshell. That's how we differentiate between production and productivity. Okay, so simple enough. So we would have differentiate between production and productivity. Now explain the importance of productivity. Now do I have to explain that really? Because based on the diagram right there, you can tell the importance of productivity. Okay? Productivity as it relates to efficiency of labor, including its value and importance. The factors affecting the labor supply, human resource development, including education, health, and working conditions. Importance of a positive work ethic, use of capital to improve productivity, land use, and declining productivity in the region. Okay, so explain the importance of productivity. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. I think it's pretty clear cut. All right. Now, when when 10 workers with $1 million of capital on 100 hectares of land can give you 14,000 tons of sugar cane compared to the same 100 acres, the same 10 workers, the same 1 million in capital, but yet they're giving you like half. So clearly, productivity is important because for one, it saves money, it saves money, and two, you get the very best out of your workforce. You maximize your workforce, you maximize the productivity of the workforce. So I would imagine that any worker, any business would want more productive workers out there because it saves money and it gives you a greater return. So that's the key thing, efficiency. This firm cannot be efficient. No way this firm can be efficient. So it, it simply means that these workers are just taking their time, moving lazily. You know, this is not an efficient production unit. Not this one, because this is about the same thing. This is, a, this is a more efficient unit because you get more for around less or the same workers, same inputs. The output is more for the same inputs. That's more efficient. And so you can tell why productivity is important for any business out there. All right, reasons for high productivity, okay? Now, in terms of farming, one reason would be, of course, fertile land and good natural resources. So you have it already. So the fertile land and the good natural resources can lead to increased productivity. If you live in a desert and you're trying to f plant products, you know, the, the output is not going to be as high. Productivity is not going to be as high. Hard work and employees, just like the other firm. And one of the key things for high, reason for high productivity is, of course, technology advanced technology technology is one of the things that can allow you to produce at a higher capacity higher productive capacity with almost the same input okay you can produce more output with almost the same input because of technology for example this sugar the same example we use here with the sugar cane all right probably you know each of these workers have maybe you know some kind of machine that helps them with the production the production of the sugar cane so therefore the output would be greater so technology is one key that can improve efficiency and cause you to produce more could imagine if you're doing everything manually that would be less productive less efficient but if you get advanced technology a nice harvester nice cedar you know uh, a better computer faster computer you can produce more things you ain't gonna attempt to wait for the computer to stick and unstick so that would enhance productivity if you have a faster system, a faster computer. So technology is one of the key ways in which you can improve productivity. All right. And of course, high quality physical capital. So we're talking about all of the stuff they use, the resources they use, the capital they use, whether it is the fixed or working, that can improve your productivity. If you have good raw materials, high quality raw materials, of course, the output is going to be of a higher quality and productivity should increase because of that. So all these are reasons for high productivity in a production unit. Calculating productivity, of course, we know that we, we saw it already. All right. So productivity of a land equal the value of the crops grown divided by the area of the land. 
productivity of capital includes revenue of the business divided by total value of the capital. So we already see that. And I don't think it's going to be too. Uh, it's not going to be coming on exam. I don't think it's going to be coming on exam. So we don't have to stress on this one too much in terms of productivity. All right. When productivity increases, a business can, of course, reduce prices, increase wages, earn a higher profit, increase production, save labor costs. For the on a, on a, on a macro level now, output increases. So the GDP increase in a country. Local goods are more competitive because the price is cheaper, of course. Export increase because you create more surplus. Wages are higher because you know there's a higher demand for your products, so the selling demand is high. So therefore, you can increase so much you pay the people, especially if you have a reduced uh, cost of production. Consumer spending increases and inflation is reduced. So let's look at this. So all these again are advantages of productivity. Reduce prices. Now, if you can produce more for the same cost, of course, you will be able to pass on that savings to your customers by reducing the price. So if you're producing more for the same, so if you spend a million for the same example we looked at with the, the, the family, producing using a million dollars and a hundred acres of land for 10 workers. So the same, but you're producing more. So now you can sell that output for a reduced price and that would give you a competitive advantage over the rivals, which can lead to, of course, increases in wages, earning higher profit, increasing production, and of course, you're going to save on labor costs. So all of this run hand in hand. So all these are advantages of productivity, increase wages, uh, reduce prices, increase production, and of course, save on labor costs because you're producing more for using the same. And as you can see, if a country is more productive, then that also spills over to on a macro level, okay? On a macro level. So the country will, be, will earn more on a whole if you have a, a productive workforce, okay? So all these advantages of higher and better productivity from a production unit. It happens on the business level, the macro level, and it happens on the larger scale, okay? earn a higher profit because again now this simply means productivity is simply telling you that your cost of production has reduced you know because you're producing more with the same same outlay of capital same outlay of labor but you're producing more you're getting more output so therefore you're going to earn more and you can you can choose to pass it on in terms of wages to your workers and you can reduce the prices if you want to eh? because you can even leave the prices at market level and gain an even wider even wider profit margin okay so it's good to have a productive workforce all right so we explain the importance of productivity right there okay uh explain the role of capital in production so i think we would have covered that already the role of capital in production capital is used in producing other goods to undertake production that labor would not compete in a timely manner for example Deep sea drilling. So look, let's let's look at that. Let's break. Let's look at that. Okay. Explain the role of capital in production. Now, some of the factors of production can be substituted for others. Okay. You can substitute one for another. For example, you can substitute labor for capital in some instances. Okay. Example: There are some there are some industries that are considered to be capital intensive and some are considered to be labor intensive capital intensive means that that industry takes a lot of capital to produce the good or service labor intensive means it requires more labor more manual labor to produce a good or service for example you have some farming for sure some farming would take a lot of manpower a lot of labor but you can also substitute some of the labor and let's say you have 100 workers you might be able to lay off 50 and buy a tractor and therefore capital can be substituted you can substitute for the labor so you buy the tractor so you get rid of 50 buy the tractor and of course you can become even more more productive so capital can be used in place of labor in some times but it depends on the industry certain industries again like the telecommunication industry of course that requires a lot of capital a lot of money 
to run Digicel online because you have to install satellites, you have to run wire, you have to do this, you have to do that. All that costs money. Construction, on the other hand, tend to be more labor intensive because you need that manpower. Okay, so some factors of production can be substituted for others, and that is what this one is talking about. Explain the role of capital in production. So capital, money, can be used to purchase, you know, more equipment and those kind of things. Also, capital, some goods are considered capital goods. What are capital goods? These are goods that are used to produce other goods in production. For example, for a farmer or a baker, a baker. So the baker would buy the flour from the mill. So for the baker, flour is a capital good because the baker is going to use that flour to make their pastries. But for the mill, flour is the end result, the output. So that's their production, the output. But for the baker, flour is an input and it's a capital good because it's used to make money and to make other products. So that's capital again being used in production. All right, so capital have, so, so, so that's, the financial one and that's the 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 ingredients and raw materials and of course we don't have, we went over the money already capital as the, the, the financial aspect of capital you use that money to buy equipment and that equipment can be used to increase and improve production and productivity okay so we already looked at the dif different type of capital fixed working but we did not we did not look at venture capital what is venture capital that is the money used to start a business as it's a venture so that's you going into a new business so you need some startup capital a lot of people in silicon valley seek out what they call venture capitalists these are people with a lot of money that are willing to sponsor somebody somebody developing a new technology a new app or something like that so a lot of people in silicon valley seek out venture capitalists to spun basically sponsor their ideas you know incubate their ideas and when they come to maturity they repair the venture capitalists the money that they would have borrowed from them previously okay so that's that's it for the capital part of it all right we're gonna look at one last topic for this video we're gonna look at the we're gonna classify the different types and levels of production okay types and levels of production so let's go types of production you have what you call primary production secondary production and tertiary production. What is primary production? Another name for primary production would be what you call the extractive industry, such as agriculture, mining, and fishing. Tertiary, sorry, secondary production is where you make something. That's where you construct or manufacture, you're making something. So that's secondary production, you're making something. So you're gonna take raw materials and turn them into a finished product. And then you have tertiary production, which is service. That's where you, you know, marketing and financial services and things like that. It's not really tangible, but it's a service. So primary is extractive. Secondary is when you're making something, you construct, you manufacture. And tertiary is where you sell the product, the services. All right. We're going to look at it a, a little bit more. All right. So let's go. All right types of production and levels of production so types again extractive or the primary secondary which is manufacturing and constructing and tertiary is the service examples of primary production you have agriculture growing coffee in jamaica you have fishing lobster fishing offshore in belize you have fly flying fish in the water of barbados Forestry, that's again a primary production. Logging in Guyana. Mining, big in Guyana and Jamaica for bauxite. You have oil in Trinidad. Uh, you have gold again in Guyana. And you have stone quarrying and those kind of things. And quarrying for volcanic ash in Montserrat. So all those are extractive or primary production. Those are the types of production. Primary, secondary, tertiary. I'm going over this many times because people tend to mix up type of production and levels of production types and levels are different so types is primary secondary and tertiary primary includes extractive taking from the earth secondary taking raw materials and making a finished product that's manufacturing making stuff construction making something 
and then tertiary is the, ser uh, the services, financial services, marketing services, whatever, services. Secondary industry, you have things like processing industries, sugar factory, alumina plants from Baxter in Jamaica, oil refinery, chemicals such as methanol and ammonia in natural, for natural gas. You have assembly industries, car assembly, consumer electronics, garment and clothing, those things. So that's manufacturing right there. And of course, you have construction, you know, building a home, an electrician, a mason, you know, hotel and resort construction. So that's secondary. Then you have tertiary production. Again, services, examples, financial services, banks, insurance companies, transport services, you know, road haulage, bus services, airlines, ports, communication services, television, radio, internet, tourism services, retail services, government services. So those are the type, the three types of production, primary, secondary, tertiary. Those are the types of production. So let's look at the levels of production. No, let's not mix them up. Let's look at the levels of production. You have subsistence, domestic, and export. Those are the levels of production, subsistence, domestic, and export. So let's look at them separately. Subsistence for family and the local community. So you're just producing enough for your family and maybe the local market, the local community. So whatever village you live in, you're producing enough for that village, family, no, for you and your family and some to sell within the village. Okay. So if you, let's say you live in Portland, you're producing enough for your family and maybe one or two people to buy from in Portland. You're living in, let's say, uh, Papino or some, some place like that. The same thing. You're living in, you know, Port of Spain or you're living in in Tunapuna or living in Shaguanas, wherever. You're producing enough for your family and maybe to sell around in the local market. You're living in St. John's, same thing. You're living in, you know, St. Michael. You're producing enough just to, you know, for that area and your family. That's subsistence. That's a small, the smallest level of production. That's like a farmer going up in the mountain, growing some stuff, taking some for yourself. You let have some left over, sell it to, you know, one or two persons in the community. Subsistence. Domestic, on the other hand, would be for the national market. So you're producing enough to supply your national market. So you live in Jamaica, you're producing enough to supply Jamaica. You're living in Antigua, enough to supply Antigua. Barbados, enough for Barbados. St. Lucia, enough for St. Lucia. St. Kitts, enough for St. Kitts. Trinidad, enough for Trinidad. Domestic. So you're producing on a national level just for your country. You're not producing for export. That's when the export level comes in, where you're producing for the international market. So you're producing, like for example, you have Caribbean broilers in Jamaica. They produce enough chicken for all the levels, including exports, because we do buy uh, Caribbean broilers stuff here in the islands. So they actually do export down here. All right, same thing, Pine Hill, they produce enough for the domestic and to export, because we do have some Pine Hill down here. Holiday snacks, they produce enough for the region and a whole. Childs and those chocolate and those things, sunshine, all these things, they produce enough for the region and a whole. All right? I don't think I've seen true juice in the islands, so I don't think true juice produce enough for, you know, for export to this side. Maybe for the other side. Maybe they do, they do produce for export. Let me just say that, but not for this side. So, levels of production, subsistence for the family and the local market domestic for national market and export for the international market those are levels of production all right to break it down further subsistence production family and the community a small farmer growing fruits and vegetables all right example building or repairing your own home or working for the neighbors that's a domestic level i mean sorry a subsistence level domestic now national market food crops eggs or milk for the national market just for the national market, for that country. So they're only known in that country. All right, building roads and major housing developments are other examples. Export now, that's creating, producing for the international market. For example, coffee or sugar for export to Japan. Now this is mainly for Jamaica. We have the Blue Mountain coffee that is exported to Japan and Europe. They love the Blue Mountain coffee over there. So that's what this is more about. You have places like Greece that make stuff that export across the region. 
Okay, you have architectural or engineering services or major overseas projects. So those in a nutshell are the levels of production and then you have the levels versus the types. Okay, so let's look at the syllabus to make sure we understand types of production. That's extractive and that's um, primary. Then you have secondary, which is construction and manufacturing. Then you have tertiary, three types of production. Levels, you have subsistence domestic and then you have surplus and export those are the levels of production okay all right so we're going to pick up from um section eight we don't want to make a marathon video so we're going to pick up from objective eight the next time so feel free to hit the notification bell so you know when that video drops all right so i know the exam is coming up so keep studying